Umpires making their way out to home plate. The lineup cards will be exchanged between Willie Stargell and uh, Roy McMillan, first base coach for the New York Mets. Mark Williams will be the home plate umpire. Harry Wendelstadt will be at first base. Doug Harvey, the crew chief at second. And Jerry Dale will be the third base umpire. Tomorrow's ball game starts at 2.15. It'll be on the Pirate Radio and Television Network. Tug McGraw will get a start. First time against the Bucks this year to be starting. His record 6-10 and, and for the Pirates. Jim Rooker, who has had to pitch two very big ball games and has come up with wins both times against the St. Louis Cardinals in those recent uh, series in Pittsburgh and in St. Louis. The Mets uh, brought up a host of youngsters, but they are going with a veteran lineup against the Pirates. They played a kind of a young lineup the night before, giving their regulars a rest, but last night the home run bats of the Pirates got into action very quickly with Stargell hitting a three-run shot in the first inning to highlight a four-run inning, and then Al Oliver came back with a big home run in the second inning, and very quickly the Pirates had a 6-0 lead. The big thing about last night's game was the ability of that ball club, the Pirates, to come back from a very tough defeat, 13-12, in St. Louis, and the way we lost it, and come back and jump off so quickly as they did against a very good pitcher, Jerry Kuzman, and to also give the bullpen a bit of a rest with Juan Pizarro going eight strong innings and winding up the winning pitcher, Hernandez closed it out. Yeah, the Mets take the field. We'll set them for you defensively. They have uh, Wayne Gadd at third base, Teddy Martinez at shortstop, Felix Mion at second base, John Milner at first, Benny Ayala, A-Y-A-L-A, is in left field. Don Hahn will be the center fielder. Rusty Staub in right field. The battery, John Matlick doing the pitching. Duffy Dyer will do the catching. They're having rain out in the Midwest of Detroit. That game delayed because of rain. They uh, were pitching Cleveland and Fryman in that ball game. Boston at Detroit, that's delayed because of rain. And as we told you, the New York-Cleveland game also delayed because of rain. And they even haven't they haven't even put any pitchers up for that ball game. Big game up in Montreal, or you might not think it's big, but it is for Montreal. If they sweep that series, they can go into a tie with the Philadelphia Phillies for third place. They are eight games out, the Phillies five games back, and that's a battle for third place. And that by the way is a money position. The Montreal Expos trailing the Phillies by three games. In that game, Jim Longboard going for the Phillies. For Montreal, Mike Torres. Two young left-handers, John Matlack at age 24 and Jerry Royce at age 25. They've been through the battles before. Matlack, 42 wins, 42 losses, and Royce been around a bit longer with 62 wins, 59 defeats. Rennie Stennis, with a couple of hits last night, has in, has in with 188. He has set an all-time pirate record for hits for a second baseman set by a guy named George Grantham. You may remember him in 1930 at 179 hits. Here's a pitch by Matt Lack to open the game. It is foul. Back out of play. Strike one. Matt Lack, good size for a pitcher. 6'3", 205 pounds. And his stuff regarded about as good as anybody in this league. The 0-1 pitch. High fly to center field, rather deep, but in the ballpark. Con with a lot of room to run. That's got it. One down. The dimensions here, 341 down the lines, but a very inviting 371 in the power alleys. And father, they're in closer to the line at 358 where the bullpens are. Straight away center field. Pretty good folk. 410 feet. Manny Sagian hitting a 281, batting second against the left-handed pitchers this year. Has seven home runs, driven in 66. Had a big three-run shot two nights ago against young Bob Fort to get the Bucks off to a 5-0 lead in that wild 13-12 ball game. The wind-up and the pitch by Matlack underway to Manny. It's a curveball. It hangs high. Ball one. The thing Matlack has not had going for him in his uh, brief two-year career is consistency. When he is good, he's very, very good. They can, you can have some off ball game. Fastball up high, and the count goes to two balls and no straight. He's pitched 247 innings and given up only 203 hits, and he's walked only 70 and struck 184. Those are amazing statistics for a pitcher 
with a record of 13 and 13. But the Mets have not been scoring that many runs. This fastball up high, and that leg goes to a 3 0 count. Leon Jones out of the lineup, and he will require surgery as this season comes to an end. Sangia takes the pitch outside, and that's ball four. Matlack asking Art Williams where that pitch was, and it was outside. Also announcement that Ken Ashramoni has been fired as a manager of the Cleveland Indians, leading everybody to assume that a guy named Frank Robinson may become the first black manager. Al Oliver, who uh, went five for five last night, is the batter. And the pitch by Matlock to him is up high, ball one. Good fastball that time by John, but way up high. <laughs> Oliver hitting at 320, 189 hits, more than anybody in the Pirate uh, ball club. One ahead of Rennie Stennett. 11 home runs, 85 RBIs. The throw to first base, Sangian back in time. You know, he told you about Jones going to the hospital for an operation. He's had ailing knees, and the Mets uh, trying to cure that. If he's healthy, he can be quite a hitter. The 1-0 pitch. Swinging in a foul tip out of the glove. Duffy Dyer. A ball and a strike on Al. Oliver having another big season. 189 hits, 93 runs, 11 home runs, 85 RBIs. The 1-1 pitch, swing and a miss by Al, and the count goes to one ball and two strikes. Now you understand we're back on the air in St. Louis and KMOX, the Cardinals' big victory this afternoon, 10-4 over Chicago, makes this very important. Um, big hello to everybody out in St. Louis. I hope we make you cry before the evening's over, but <laughs> Matlock might have something to say about that. The 1-2 pitch, foul, back out of play by Al. I tell you, the last two series the Pirates had with the Cardinals in Pittsburgh and in St. Louis, the players talking about it, they thought they were some of the best games they've played in many, many years. And anybody that paid money to see those games certainly got their money's worth. And if you saw that 13-12 to 12 game, you'll be talking about it for the rest of your life. Curveball away. Two balls, two strikes. Even the Pirate players, despite the fact they lost, are still talking about it and speaking uh, rather favorably about the excitement that it produced. The 2-2 pitch by Matlack. Foul back out of play by Oliver. Bob Smythe. Writer for the Pittsburgh Press. Very wisely decided not to make a play on that one. The win tonight is a left-handed hitter's win. It's blown pretty strong to right field. Oliver hit a home run last night, or a couple of them. The 2-2 pitch. Line shot, and it's right into the glove of Martinez. No, it's off his glove into left field. Base hit by Al. That ball was in and out of the glove of Martinez. Looked like he had a double play ball, but it got away from him. And i got to tell you, it was hit so sharply that it almost tore his glove off. You try to find out why the taps were played before the ball game. If I could tell you, I honestly would. I have no idea other than to tell you that the 26th Army Band, I am told, was playing them for servicemen who died this year in this area or something. I believe that's what it was for. So that, I think, is the significance of the taps that was played prior to the National Anthem. Willie Stargell, the batter, swings and foul tips the ball, strike one. It is very difficult in this ballpark to hear yourself, let alone hear a public address announcement, to find out exactly why taps were played. We're trying to find that out. We are inquiring during the playing of the National Anthem, but that's about all we could get. The 0-1 pitch to Willie swings and misses, strike two. The Mets did a job on Stargell in that last series in Pittsburgh. He went 0-17 for 17 against Sadecki, Kuzman, and Matlack. But he came back very quickly last night with a three-run homer in the first inning off Jerry Kuzman. Runners at first and second, one down. And the 0-2 pitch to Willie. He swings and misses strike three. Foul tip and it was held by Duffy Dyer. Now that puts the burden on a guy named Richie Ziz. 
Betting fifth, playing at right field. Richie betting at 310. This is his uh, second year in the Major League. 16 home runs and 97 RBIs. And the sophomore jinx didn't quite suit him this year. There is no such animal for Richie Zisk, or no such title. Had a whale of a year. Sank in a second, Oliver Spurs, two down. And the pitch is line foul. Out of play down the right field line. He just got into some bad habits early in September. He had a strep throat, shot out a couple of ball games, got back into the lineup, and was out in front of everything, pulling the ball. His strong suit is going up the middle and actually to the opposite field. And he hits the ball well when he's dealing that way. Matt Lacks 0-1 pitch, and it is fouled right at the feet of Duffy Dyer in the count of 0-2. Zesk Oliver and Stachel really got hot in early July and through the month of August for the Pirates, and they got them right back into the race. Pirates at that time were about 14 games under 500, but are currently 10 games over in a span of 24 more wins and losses. This fouls at the feet again of Duffy Dyer, and the count holds at nothing in two. Keith Morris from Sports Illustrated getting the information for us on the reason for the playing of Tabs prior to the game. We understand they're getting some calls back at the station, but it was for those who have given their lives and service to their country. Count of 0-2 on this. The runners lead and the pitch is foul back out of play. Had a good rip at a fastball. It was up high. Matt Black, lifetime against the Pirates, has three wins and four defeats. He leads the major leagues, or he's tied for the lead, with Louis Tiant in shutouts with seven. He is that type of pitcher. When he is on, base hits are hard to find. He found that out last Sunday. Had only three. The 0-2 pitch. It is outside. Ball one. One ball and two strikes. Broke a slider, a curveball, but just missed the outside corner. Dyer and Matlack didn't think it missed. It was a good pitch, uh, but evidently the umpire at Williams thought it hung outside. Sankey in a second, Oliver Spurs, two down, first inning, the pitch, and it is lined up the middle, picked off by Mion, through to second, he got him there. Great play by Felix Mion, they were playing up the middle, and he took a sure base hit away from Richie Z. Pirates failed to score, no runs on a hit, no errors, we leave to, and we'll go to the bottom of the first, no score. Well, we're moving right down to the end of another great year of baseball. And about this time, a lot of us start thinking about the playoffs in the series. I'm sure you'll be glued to the TV and the radio no matter what team makes it. And you know one thing you got to have with you is Iron City beer. It's a great beer. Just pop open a big cold bottle of iron and see for yourself. Only the very best ingredients can give a beer that golden color. And only the finest brewing can create a creamy head like that. And a freshly poured glass of iron... Well, that's a picture of perfection that every real beer drinker understands. Now, go ahead. Take a sip. A beer that good-looking was meant for tasting. A hearty and tangy flavor, robust and rich as can be. Believe you me, it's pure beer drinking satisfaction. Yes, sir, that's a great beer. Iron City beer. Now, you make sure you've always got a case of Iron City on hand. Because when you're really ready to pour it on, you can pour on the iron. Baltimore tonight, the Orioles leading by a half game over the New York Yankees with a record of 85 and 71. The, Ma the Yankees, 85 and 72, are in a scoreless game after two with Milwaukee. Colburn against Palmer. Still uh, no start out in Cleveland. It's raining out there. Bobby Bonds has hit his 21st home run off Cincinnati pitching. Not off Cincinnati pitching, but his 21st home run of the year. It came off Darcy in the first inning with two on, and they take a three to nothing lead. Behind Jim Barr into the bottom of the first inning. Magic number for the Reds, down to two. Don Hahn, Felix Mion, and Rusty Staub to go against Jerry Royce here in the bottom of the first. The windup and the pitch by Jerry underway. It is down low, ball one. 
Pirates have Hebner Mendoza, Stennett, and Robertson in the infield. Starge a lot of her in disc in the outfield, left to right. And the battery Royce and sank here. The 1 0 pitch by Jerry, a 5 ball 2. Fergie Jenkins and uh, Pitts Morris going in the Texas uh, Kansas City ball game. Phillies in Montreal, no score. That's after one inning up at Jerry Park. The 2 0 pitch, he is in there with a strike to Han. Royce and Rooker have been the consistent pitchers for the Pirates this year, and uh, staff that's been riddled with injuries, Doc Ellis and Kenny Brett. The 2-1 pitch, round ball, right back to the mound, picked off by Royce, an easy play at first, and that retires Don Hahn. Royce, so far this year, has uh, worked 244 and two-thirds innings. Jim Rooker, who will be working tomorrow, leads him with 247 innings, but those two fellows have been the only two pirate pitchers to pitch over 200 innings. Kenny Brett out for about four or five weeks is in with 190 innings. Felix Mion hitting at 269, but batting over 350 against the Bucks takes a fastball up high from Rice, ball one. Felix hitting uh, second, one home run, he's driven in 32. Pirates play him straight away, right on top of the plate, chokes up on the bat. Well, uh, Ronnie Hunt, curveball, missed outside. Ball two. Royce tried to equal his win total of last year with the Houston Astros. He won 16. He's 15-11 this year. Fastball taken by Mion. Two balls and a strike. Back to the natural grass surface here at uh, Shea Stadium. This ballpark. Still in pretty good shape, despite the usage by both the Mets and the Yankees this year. Pops them up. Foul, but it's drifting out of play. Rice coming back with a fastball away from Neon. Two balls, two strikes. Crowd last night, very sparse. Uh, just around 10,000. About 20,000 on hand here tonight. And expect a big turnout for the finale on Sunday. That's their fan appreciation day. Somewhere around 40, 44,000. The 2-2 pitch to Neon. Fouled out of play down the right field line, account holding. Mets last year suddenly got back into the picture in late September and stayed right into the thing down to the seventh game of the World Series. And a guy named Tug McGraw suddenly got the pitching back. The 2 2 pitch. Hard shot right side, picked off by Stennett. Funny hopping ball. He's got him at first. Mid play by Ernie, almost overran the ball. Well, it's usually uh, going away from Rennie over there, but it puffed up off some soft dirt there, and he had to make a retreat to get the ball. Two down. Rusty stopped the batter. Some rumors here that the Expos are thinking of a trade, sending Willie Davis down here and getting stopped back. But strictly a rumor. Curveball by Jerry. Hangs high. Ball one. Rusty hitting at 261. 18 home runs, driven in 75. He's had a lot of nagging injuries again this year. Curveball bends in there, taken by Rusty in the count of one and one. Now we're going to look at a right-handed pitcher on Sunday, the first time in the last seven games with New York. Bob Apodaca will go on Sunday. Ray Sadecki being bypassed. Pitch down low on Rusty. Count of two balls and a strike on stop. Two down, nobody on. Mets first inning. No score in the ball game. The announcement here that Ken Aspermani has been fired as manager of the Indians. and He did quite a job this year. The 2 one pitch. High pop-up foul, I believe, out of play. Robertson drifting over, but he may have a play. He reaches in, and he's got it. A good play by a redhead. Had to fight off the crowd a bit there, but he made the grab. The Mets in the first inning go down in order, so we've completed one. No score. Hey, how many times have you heard me talk about the new cowhide baseball and how strange it seems not to call it the horsehide? Well, my friends, it's still the old pilota, just a different package. Sort of like the new half a case of Iron City beer. Yes, Iron City beer now comes in a brand new package, half a case. But it's still the same rich, hearty Iron City beer that you've been enjoying all along. It's just that now you can buy 12 cans of ice-cold, thirst-beating Iron City beer in one convenient, easy-to-carry package. And you know what makes it even more convenient? Well, you can buy it right at your friendly neighborhood tavern. You can't beat that now, can you? 
So the next time you're enjoying a frosty draft or two of Iron City beer in your favorite tavern, remember to take some of that great beer pleasure home with you. Just ask the man for a half a case of iron. And when you're really ready to pour it on, my friend, well, you know what to do. Hey, you just pour on that iron. <laughs> Second inning, Bob Robertson, Richie Hebner, and Mario Mendoza to bat against John Matlock. I'm talking about Ken Astromani being fired. He had his uh, ball club in contention and in first place uh, right around the All-Star game, but the second half of the year has been an off one for them. They've fallen under 500. They're 10 games behind Baltimore. Robertson hitting a 225, 15 home runs, driven in 45. Pitch by Matlock. And it is swung on and missed strike one. He has a fastball by him. Pirates wind up the road trip on Sunday. And so far on this trip, they've won three of the four games. The only loss, that wild one in St. Louis, 13 to 12. Matt Lacks, 0-1 delivery. Swings and misses. Strike one. Or strike two, rather. There was no doubt about that win. The other night in St. Louis being a very big one for the Cardinals and a damaging one for the Pirates. The 0-2 pitch. And he just missed outside. He tried to throw that slider over the corner again. That's the second time he's thrown that pitch to a right-handed batter. And the second time, Dyer and Matlack question the call. He just brings the slider over the outside part of the plate. And Williams ruling that the ball is hanging outside there. He get, he's getting some flack from the New York Met dugout. One ball, two strikes. And Metlock's pitch is lined in the right center field into the gap all the way to the wall. Robertson's got a double for sure. It bounces at the base of the wall. Hahn picks it up, and he's in with a double. Good to see the redhead going that way with the ball. You may remember the 1971 World Series against Mike Cuellar, hitting the ball well out that way against left-handed pitching. And John Matlack and Dyer, a little bit uh, annoyed on that 0 and 2 call on Robertson. They thought he had him struck him uh, had him struck out, but he came right back with a double in the right center field. Now Hebner will try to get him over the third. They play around the right field on Richie, the left fielder Ayala. Ayala. Good uh, 90 feet off the line, and Hahn well into right center field. Martinez keeping Robertson safer, close at second. Hefner fouls back out of play for a strike. Reds don't score in the first inning. San Francisco and Bobby Bonds is three-run homer, leading three to nothing. Tilly's out on the top of the second, and Jerry Park no score there. Hebner has scored 94 runs this year, the most in his uh, major league career. The L1 pitch to Ritchie, loops off the right side, back to me on, he makes the grab, one down. And Matlack got him on the fist that time. One out, no score. Bob Robertson still at second base, and Marion Mendoza is better. That series with the Cubs Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the final three games of the season, has uh, got to be a determining factor in the Eastern Division race again. We'll go down to the final three days, not much doubt about that. And the ball club has announced that the ticket uh, window at Gate, River, at Gate A at Three Rivers will be open Saturday from 9 to 6 p.m. and at G.C. Murphy's from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. downtown. They're available for the Cubs games and also for the championship series. Mendoza taking a pitch inside, ball one. Mario hitting a 228, the first time he started in a while. As Mertaz gone with Frank Tavares, but giving him a rest here tonight. Mario, no home runs, driven in 15. From Chihuahua, Mexico, a 1 0 pitch. Rounds weekly to third base, Wayne Garrett will make the play. That'll retire Mendoza. Holding it second, Robertson. Now the double, still at second base, and Bobby Robertson, no score in the game. Jerry Rice, the pitcher, will step in. Pitcher number 41, Jerry Rice. Rice has driven in four runs, 13 hits, and 81 times at bat.
Cardinals got some good relief work today from Young Ray Bear to close out the game. They won that game 10 to 4. Bob Gibson picking up his 11th win. Play swings and fouls back out of play. Former Pirates and native of the Pittsburgh area, Tom DeTorey started that game. He lined up the loser. They shell him for four runs in the fifth inning after getting three in the second. Joe Torrey hitting a two-run homer. 11th of the year, and Mike Tyson hit his first home run of the year. That came in the sixth inning of Bert Hooten. Jerry bounces to the right side, cut off by Felix Neon. He's got him at first, and the Pirates failed to score in the second inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. We'll go to the bottom of the second, no score. You know? For the New York Mets, it'll be the four, five, and six batters as Rice retired Han Neon and Staub in order in the first. Benny Ayala, a late entry in the lineup, replacing Cleon Jones, and the announcement made just at game time that Jones will go to the hospital and have uh, surgery done on his knee. And Ayala, who made quite a debut in the major leagues, hitting a home run his first time at bat against Houston's Tom Griffith, steps in at Tidewater this year, hit 274. 11 home runs, drove in 40. He's a native of Puerto Rico. Playing in left field, batting fourth. Following him, John Milner and then Teddy Martinez. The pitch by Jerry is a curveball in there for a strike. I think Chuck Tanner also hit a home run his first time at bat in the major leagues. The Milwaukee Braves, now manager of the White Sox, the 0-1 pitch, curve down low on the count of 1-1. One Pirates have uh, played well against the Mets this year, the only Eastern Division ball club that they have an advantage against. The 1-1 pitch to Ayala, foul, back out of play. The Pirates have won nine of this and lost six. They have won four of the six games played here at Shea Stadium. It wasn't that way last year. Had it been, the Pirates might have been playing in the World Series. Bucks haven't done well against the Cardinals or the Philly. He got back with the Cardinals late in the season. Curve and a foul right at the feet of Ayala. If you're going to win an Eastern Division title or any divisional title, you've got to play good game or good baseball against teams in your own division because that's where you make up ground in the Pirates. This dominated the Western Division teams going well over 500 with a 44 and 28 mark, but they're under 500 against the East 39 and 45 and why they are currently a half game behind the Cardinals. Changed up by Rice off the fastball, Mr. Way, and the count of two and two. The two-two pitch by Jerry, high pop-up foul, drifting out of play behind the New York Mets dugout on the first base side. Two balls, two strikes. Pirates failure to score in the first and second innings have uh, run the string now to 21 consecutive innings. At they have failed to score a run for Rice in the last three games. The 2-2 pitch by Rice underway to Ayala. Curveball just missed away. Full count of three and two. John Milner waiting on deck. Ayala looks like he sits on that fastball. The 3-2 pitch. And he gets it and pops it up off the right side. Foul ball. Robertson near the railing again, makes the grab, out on the warning track for the first out. One out on a 3-2 pitch, Ayala fouling out, brings up John Miller, leads the Mets in home runs with 20. He's driven in 63. Batting at 251, Tom Seaver, telling Bob Prince and me that he thinks this fella had a chance to be a very good hit. Mets haven't developed that many. Cleon Jones, about the only one. The pitch to Milner, swings and misses, strike one. Foul ball, and then hits Sanguian on the thigh. You never see Sanguian go down or rub anything when he gets hit. Well, it's caught so well here for some championship seasons. Jerry Grody, sideline, he's gone for the season, as is Bud Harrelson. Grody has never been hurt at all until the last two years, and really has been sidelined uh, both seasons. You know, late, early last year, but came back to finish. The 0 1 pitch to Milner. In there, taking strike two. Race one away with a pitch that time. 
Tank Gian, not rubbing anything, but walking around down there, that last blow kind of hurt him, the foul ball. Manny, I think, is kind of catching now in about 87th ball game of the last 89. The 0-2 delivery, curve, low and outside, checked off by Milner in the count of uh, one ball, two straight. No score in the game. We're in the Mets' second inning, one down, nobody on. The 1-2 delivery, high fly to right field, not very deep. Richie just gets under it, and it'll retire John Milner. And they got that one out on the end of the bat. The wind that had been pulling rather strong to right field now has... Uh, not noticeable at all as the flags hanging very limp in center field. And they're having rain in Detroit. They're having rain in Cleveland. The Yankees playing in Cleveland and Boston at Detroit. Baltimore and Milwaukee, no score. They're in the bottom of the fourth at uh, Baltimore. The pitch underway to Teddy Martinez, the fastball, a five ball one. Martinez hitting at 213, two home runs, driven in 41, a right-handed batter. Takes the fastball down low on the count of 2-0. Oh, Martinez tried switch hitting a couple of years ago. I guess it was last year in 73 that uh, gave it up very quickly. The 2-0 pitch by Rice. Line drive, center field, but it hangs up out there. Oliver will make the play, and that'll retire Martinez. Mets go down in order in the first and second inning. We've completed two. No score. Now yeah, the scoreless game between two left-handers, John Matlack and Jerry Rice over the front two. The Mets haven't had a base runner so far, but Pirates have stranded runners in the first and second inning. A walk and a single by St. Gian and Oliver after Stennett flied out. He struck out Stargell, got Zisk on a good play by Mian at second base on the fourth play. For the final out, an opening double by Robertson, left standing in the second inning. Standard on an eight-game hitting streak, stepping in. And this youngster, just 23 years of age, his first year. The full-time second baseman taps over the head of the third baseman, Garrett, on the left field. He's got a base hit. Nine in a row for Rennie, and that's base hit number 189 for him. He's got a good shot at possibly getting 200 hits this year. He started off poorly, that trade between the Pirates uh, with the Phillies was very good for both ball clubs. Cash has done a whale of a job for the Phillies. Kenny Brett had a great first half of the year, but what it did really is give Stennett a chance to play regularly at one spot, and he certainly has made the most of it. He now has 189 hits. Brock, by the way, had 189 going into today's ball game, and I'm sure Lou probably had a couple out there. Sanguian tried to bunt for a base hit, fouls it at the feet of the catcher, Duffy Dyer, showing his uh, disappointment, clapping his hands together. Strike one on Manny. Manny Stennett showing a picture today of when he was playing amateur baseball. He said, what do you see a picture of me uh, when I was young? And I said, when you were young, you're only 23 now. Manny loops down the right field line. It could be trouble drifting down there. It's a foul ball. Just foul. That ball almost hit the chalk line. It bounced in the dirt portion. And uh, through the grass down there, the foul line, and there's not much more than, I guess, a foot down there. And the foul line separates the middle of that foot, and it just missed on the right side of it. Uh, Sagian almost had himself a uh, possible double there that would have put a standard over in the third base. Time call. Manny wants to go back and get the pine bar rag. Ralph Gar leads the National League and hits with 208. Dave Cash at 203. Garvey at 198. Oliver with a base hit his first time up has 190. Lou Brock at the start of the day had 189. And Stennett started with 188. Now in the top six is pretty high uh, stature for a kid playing his first year full-time at the second base for any step. The pitch to Sangian hits sharply to short. They'll get to Martinez to Mian if they're the first and double play. Now he gets into trouble and he knows it all the time when he pulls the ball off that left side. 
Matched into an easy 6-4-3 double play. That'll bring up Al Oliver. Scoop single off the glove of Martinez in the first inning. Well hit ball. The pitch to Oliver tapped off the first base side foul. That's been in the background. You may have heard Matt Blink stating that the New York Yankee ball game will be starting at 9 o'clock in Cleveland. So there ain't evidently letting up there. Matt lacks a one delivery. Inside on Al. Backs him off the plate. The ball on the strike. Extended with that hit. Bouncing ball over the head of Garrett. Extends his hitting streak to nine games. No score, two down, the pitch to Oliver outside, the count of two balls and a strike. Oliver came up in 1969 when the Pirates made a mass uh, youth uh, infusion, first year of expansion, and that ball club was successful right at the start. Swing and a miss by Oliver on a curve, strike two. He and Hebner, Buddy Patek, Dave Cash, Bobby Robertson, Manny Sankian all came up that year. And the Pirates have had nothing but winning season since then. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Swings and misses strike three. Matt like just reached back and blew a fastball past Oliver. Pirates, no runs on a hit. No errors and nobody left. And we go to the bottom of the third. No score. Dyer, Garrett, and Matlack, the 7, 8, 9 batters to go against Royce in the third inning as he's retired six in a row. No score in the ball game. The Cardinals winning this afternoon have won their 84th ball game. The Pirates tried to do that tonight to stay even with them. The Eastern Division has had some great races in the five years they've been going. That's with that miraculous finish in 1969 and again last year going down to the final game of the season. This one running that same fashion. Not the only runaway was 1972 under Bill Verdon. The Pirates won by 11 and a half games. The reason for the half, that was the year of the baseball strike, and some teams played more games than others. Here's a pitch by Royce to open up the third. It is down low on Dyer. Ball one. Garrett's been carrying a hot bat uh, recently, and particularly against the Pirates. Hit three hits last night against Pizarro. The 1-0 pitch to Dyer, added weekly to third. Hebner backpedaling, makes the play, throws. He pulls Robertson off the bag, and a tag made by Robertson on Duffy Dyer. Good play by Bobby Robertson on a fourth throw by Richie Hebner. Very high and down the home plate side of first base. Robertson made a great play. And a lot of Cardinal fans here tonight. Cardinals put on quite a show here earlier this month at 25 inning ball game. Wayne Garrett stepping in, takes a strike from Rice. Wayne betting at 225, 12 home runs, he's driven in 50. And this fellow draws a lot of walks. He's been on base about 190 sometimes. Check it exactly. The pitch is in there at the knees, taking strike two. Garrett with 85 walks, 113 hits, 190. Eight times on base. Curveball low and away. And the count of one and two. The wind up on the one two pitch to Garrett. Foul back out of play. This is part of uh, batting averages that not too many people look at, and I would wish that maybe that might go into the statistics. Uh, a fellow's on base average during the course of the year. Guys like Ron Hunt, who's now with the Cardinals, he used to be with Montreal. You check their statistics. They're about 420 batters sometimes. You take their walks, hit by pitches, and how many hits they get. That's an important part of the game. The batting average isn't the only determining thing. The one-two pitch, curve up high, and the count of two and two.
I want to take a look at the baseball. Your Rice wants another one, rather. Throwing it out of play. No score, one down in the Mets' third inning. The pitch underway to Garrett is a curve just up high. Had him out in front. He slowed up on that pitch. A full count of three and two. Royce went full on the leadoff batter in the second inning. Benny Ayeva. Before he got him to foul out. The three-two pitch. Foul back out of play again. pitch to Wayne Garrett. Swing and a miss. Track three. With a fastball right past him in at the left. First strikeout by Rice who this year has not been the strikeout pitcher he has been in the past. But he's a winner this year. He's had only uh, 132 strikeouts this year and 247 innings. Now that's wrong. That's Jim Rooker's record. The printout on Royce is not too good there. Jerry hasn't had that many strikeouts. Matlack, first ball hitting, bounces up the middle, picked off by uh, Stennett, and he's got him a trace. That ball hit the glove of Jerry Royce, carried over towards Ronnie Stennett, and the out goes one to four to three. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. Royce retires nine in a row for the front three, and we've completed three. No score. Baseball has been brought to you by Iron City Beer. And as we go to the fourth inning, your host is your Pirate Land Chrysler Plymouth dealer, who has immediate delivery on America's number one selling compact. Madlock still warming up while we have a moment. Let's take 20 seconds for our local stations. Now more than ever, the Liberty Tubes are a mess. So now is the time to call on the commuter computer. If you're still trying to get your way to and from Pittsburgh, have your employer contact the commuter computer to get you moving. All right, Willie Stodgill is struck out standing in. Matlock delivers, and it's high for a ball. No score as we play here in the top of the fourth. Matlax had base runners on, but he's been tough. Been a couple of bouncing balls that have gone to his benefit. Pitch to Stodgill, swing and a miss. Back in the first inning with runners at first and second. Sisk get a ball. Looked like a base hit right through the middle, but it hit the pitching mound. And skipped over to the right where Mayan can make the play. San Guillen in the third inning with a runner at first just missed a looping double down the right field line and bounced into a double play. Sajo base hits right through the middle. Madlack hung a curveball on a 1-1 pitch. That's the fourth hit of the ball game. In the Cardinal Cub game, Cardinals 10, 11, and 0. Chicago 4, 13, and 0. Gibson the winner, Detroit the loser. Torrey and Tyson hit home runs, by the way. Now the batter is Richie Zisk. Richie's ball back in the first looked like a base hit up the middle till it skipped off the mound over toward me on. Matlack delivers. He hits a high twisting foul off first and out of play and we'll pause for station identification on the Pirate Baseball Network. All the good sports are on Pirate with New York at Cleveland, Boston at Detroit. Change up, hit down toward short. Martinez on to Mayan, on to first. No, they don't get set. So they got one out. Fans are booing here. They thought they had Zisk, but they didn't. Bob Robertson, he doubled in the gap in right center back in the second inning. One out, one on, fourth inning, and no score. He 
Keith Morris, the Sports Illustrated, reminds that they may get a start with the Yankee-Cleveland game in Cleveland at 9 o'clock, where they have announced the firing of Ken Aspromonte. He announced it himself. Then Phil Seggy comes on to say he'll finish out the season, which was nice of Phil. Aspromonte did a pretty good job with that ball club. Robertson with a double. Now they'll start guessing again, and along about here, and from here on in, will be will it be Frank Robinson? They'll start all that up again. Matlack on one to Bob Robertson. Foul tip. Two strikes here to Bobby. Zisk leading off first. Matlack up high, ball one. Staub is playing exceptionally deep to Robertson in right. Deeper than Ayala is in left, where Robbie has more power. Matlack, a ball, two strikes. One out, one on, fourth inning and no score. Cubs one, 10-4 behind Bob Gibson. Although they did have some relief help. Inside almost hit him. Seems rather strange. To be broadcasting a game on the Pirate Network, knowing that also the Cardinal Network is aboard, and they're rooting like the daylights for the Mets to win this one. Don't blame him at all. 2-2 delivery. A smack to the third baseman, Garrett. Over to first double play. A line drive by Bobby Robertson, the third baseman, Garrett, who fired the first to double up Zisk, and the side's retired. No runs, one hit, no errors, nobody left. We go to the bottom of the fourth, and uh, no score. Keith Morris grabbed that microphone. He's with Sports Illustrated. Now that Aspermani's been letting let go, I suppose the guessing game will start in many quarters. Who will be the oncoming manager in Cleveland? Well, I think it's sort of a foregone conclusion. That's my own opinion. That it'll be Frank Robinson. Uh, they got him uh, at quite a bit of a salary, you know, and uh, it looks as if he's definitely going to be probably now the first black manager in baseball. Well, we'll see how she turns out. As it steps in here, Don Hahn in the fourth inning on uh, and Royce works and inside. Funny thing about it, all the battles between Royce and Matlack this year, they've been at each other's throats four times. Matlack has, Royce has won two of the four, lost one, no decision on the other. Matlack has lost three and won one of the four. Ball one and strike one to Hahn, who went out on a comebacker to the mound back in the first inning. We're in the fourth inning. Change in there for a call, strike one and two. Cardinals lead by a half game. Having beaten the Cubs 10 4 today, Chicago out hit them 13 11, but they don't pay off on hits, do they? One ball and two strikes to Hahn. Steps out. Sanguian, in some distress for a moment, now says he's okay. Royce getting the sign from Sangi. Into the windup and the one-two pitch. And he throws it high, two-two. There's a fly ball out into center, and Al Oliver drifts over a couple of steps. One out. San Francisco leading the Reds three to nothing in the San Francisco fourth inning at Cincinnati. Bobby Bonds hit his 21st homer to knock in the runs. Barr and Darcy with Borbone Dracula on in relief in the second inning. Well, if the Reds lose it and the Dodgers win tonight, they can have no less than a tie. Numbers dwindle down rapidly at this stage of the race. Here's Mion, bounced out to second, first time up. Chokes up on the bat. Lou Brock stole a base, his 117th steal of the year. Lulu, out of sight. 
One zero inside ball two two zero. Brock's made a lot of money outside of baseball with his floral shop. Then he invented a intersole, I think, with Converse. It's made him a lot of money too. That they uh, picked up. So he's done right well with the dancing feet. You wonder what he might have done if he'd have tried to be as adroit at stealing ten years ago. You ever wonder about that? Uh, why is he such a better base hitter at an older age? Is it he learned something about the hitters or the pitchers? I don't know. One one. Grounded down to the shortstop, Mendoza. Strong throw. Two out. Of course, when you get around to it, Maury Wells set his record when he was quite aged as far as baseball players go. Uh, Gator, uh, I saw Lou Brock just after he broke Wells' record, and he was telling me that even at his age, uh, one of the things that he feels has helped him is the fact that he studies his body, you know, and he's very uh, cognizant of the fact that uh, it has a great deal to do with reflexes and things like that. Rusty Staub, fouled out to first, watches the curve bend in. Well, speed isn't everything in stealing bases. you got to have some smarts with it, and Brock certainly has plenty of that. Royce kicks, comes down, stop, fouls down the left line out of play. No score here with two down in the fourth. Thus far, Royce has pitched a perfect game. Eleven in a row have gone down. There's a change that was in the strike zone, and Staub reached out and flicked it foul. Mrs. Galbeth here tonight. Dan Galbeth, the president of the ball club, is here. Little chopper up toward Royce, off to his right, throws strongly, and Staub is out. And Royce has gone through a perfect four innings of a scoreless ball game. Hello, 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 me, Mary Jean, our superstar. Tell them about our Chrysler Plymouth car. Um, 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 okay, fellas, based on combined figures for March through June, you know who's number one in small car sales? We are. Please tell us some more. I mean America's best-selling small cars come from Plymouth. We have sold Pinto, Vega, VW, Mustang, 2, and Dobson. We want to hear it all. Well, small wonder we're number one. Duster, Valiant, and Stamp are the common sense cars. Small outside, big inside, and economical all over. And they're all clean up twice at your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Because it costs us more to keep them than to sell them. Oh, you know what I mean. Thank you, me, Mary Jean, for coming through. That's why we love you. Bum, 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 bum. Come on in for a great deal on America's number one selling small car at your Pirate Land Chrysler Plymouth dealer. <laughs> Into the Pirates' fifth inning of a scoreless ball game, and uh, the latter three in the lineup, Hebner, Mendoza, and Royce will be going at it. In games of note, at the end of three and a half innings, the Giants lead the Reds three nothing on a home run by Bobby Bond. Jim Barr pitching that one. Montreal leading Philadelphia uh, two to nothing now at the end of four. Three back of the Phillies trying to get in the third place. Pittsburgher Tommy Carroll now pitching for the Reds. Baltimore and Milwaukee scored us into five. Milwaukee's given Baltimore fits all year long. Hebner on a check swing, and it's two balls, no strikes. Hebner foul lined a soft one out to Mion back in the second inning. Funny that this race would get down to where the Cardinals are looking for the Mets and the Cubs to beat us, and the Pirates are looking for the Cubs and the Expos to beat the Cardinals. While they're still doing their own thing on their own. The Cardinals did it today, winning 10 4. And now rooting for the Mets to pop us. Strike three and one. Don't know that I blame them, and I'm sure they don't blame the Pirates for rooting for Chicago and the men of mock. Cardinals aren't going to have any easy uh, run of it up there in Expo Park. i got a little news for you. Hebner's been walked by Matlack. That's his second walk. Threw it inside off the left shoulder. 
But uh, for you Cardinal fans listening in on the Cardinal Network, if it gives you any sense of satisfaction, the Buckos play against the Cubs like the Cubs are the New York Yankees in 1925. They have just knocked the Buckos galley west. So hang in there, folks. Tell you what, October the 1st, I'll let you know how it comes out. Here's Mendoza. Round it out to third. They're playing up looking for a bunt. He swings away, strike one. Milner holding to Hebner here in the fifth. No score. Matlack checks in the 0-1 to Mario. Checks off the pitch and fouls off to the right out of play. No ball, two strike pitch in a moment. Hebner off first. Matlack delivers high curve, and it's a ball inside and high. Baltimore batting in the sixth inning. No score there. Rain delay, Boston at Detroit, New York at Cleveland. 1-2 to Mendoza. Swing and a miss. He strikes him out. Matlack picks up his third strikeout of the night. Now Jerry Royce, who got it out to uh, Leon in the second inning. Tighten up at third in Garrett. Royce turns around with the pitches outside and high ball one. is toward Garrett. He's up with it. He throws back up to second base. They go on to first base. Double play. Well, they went on a double play from five to six to three. Because the uh, Milner was able to get back in time with the ball bunted off the third base side. Even though Mion was charging over, Martinez was able to get over there in time to get it and fire it up. So the Bucks are down. So at the end of four and a half, it's nothing, nothing. Pirate baseball has been presented by your Pirate Land Chrysler Plymouth dealer. The next portion will be brought to you by Daily Juice Natural Juice Products, natural fruit drink concentrate, and Daly's Cocktail Time Cocktail Mixes. Don't know whether you buy all that stuff out in St. Louis, folks, but hang in there anyhow. <laughs> Here's Benny Aiella, fouled out to first base. First time up. He's playing in place of Cleon Jones. He swings and he misses. Cleon will not play anymore this year, and he'll be operated on around the 10th or the 11th of October. Knee surgery. Aiella. He was from Bioman, Puerto Rico. Takes a curve high from Royce, 1-1. One, one. Still a rain delay in Cleveland with the Yankees waiting patiently there. Baltimore batting in the sixth at Milwaukee in the Baltimore against Milwaukee and no score. Here's the 1-1 one, one to Ayala. And he slams a drive into right center for a base hit. That's the first base runner of the night for the New York Mets. That'll bring up John Milner, who flied out to right field in the second inning. Milner, fly 
fly to right. He's in with 20 home runs. They play him around to right. So, after retiring 12 in a row, Ayala gets a base hit. Milner watches low and away, ball one. There are many observers of the third game in St. Louis with the Pirates and the Cardinals that'll think that that game is the pivotal contest. And they have been asking questions galore as to why the Bucks. There's a bouncer down to second. Stennett throws to Mendoza, the first double play. The questions have been really uh, been asked. Uh, when you get a three-run lead in the 11th inning, why you come with two pitchers of uh, no major league experience when you can go with either a Royce, a Rooker, or a Pizarro. Figuring if you get that game, you put them two back in the last column and uh, move up on them in the win column and let the chips fall where they may in the Mets series. And as it turned out, the way the Pirates bombed the Mets pitching last night, I could have pitched and won it. Not quite, but close. Curveball, one and one. This is one of the charms of the game of baseball. Danny Murtaugh had his own reasons and doggone good ones to why he did what he did. But there are those that think when you're that close to the thing, you got to nail them, foul away. And they had the Cardinals down three, as the fans in St. Louis know. But it's not to say that either Royce or Rooker or Pizarro could have beaten the Cardinals that night anyhow. That you'll never know. Ground ball right side over goes Rennie Stennett. Throw strongly and Milner's out. We have gone through five innings of play and there is no score. With well, on the National League, been a change. The Giants lead the Reds 3 to 1 and the Giants batting in the fifth. Montreal at the end of five lead the Phillies 2 0. His 28th homer for the Reds to get their point on the board. Head of the order for the Pirates here in the sixth inning of a scoreless ball game. Rennie Stennett fly to center and looped a single to left center. And then was erased on a double play. Pirates are in with four hits and uh, two walks against Madlack, but he's also helped engineer two double play balls. Game scoreless. Stennett watching the strike. There's playing Rennie out into right center to gap him in the left center. He smacks one off the glove of Garrett down the line at third. Stennett is around first. Ayala comes up firing, and Stennett digs back in. There was a great throw by Benny Ayala. Stennett was on his way to second, just making sure that if uh, Ayala would bobble the ball, he'd be able to go on into second base. What's so remarkable is that ball was hit just inside third, and I don't know what Ayala's doing playing Stennett over as close as he was to the line. But he was. Here's Sanguian, who walked and bounced into a double play in the third. That's the fifth hit of the ball game for the Pirates. The game is yet scoreless. Stennett is short lead at first. Meon holding. Matlack kicks. Stennett squares around the bunt. Pops it up toward Dyer. Ruled foul by the plate umpire as Dyer caught it on one hop. And Art Williams ruled foul ball. So Stennett will come back, and so will Sanguian. have had a base runner in every inning. A hit in the first four, a walk in the fifth, and now a hit here in the sixth. Sanguin, who tried to bunt in the this preceding pitch, we'll see what he's doing now. No balls and a strike. Sixth inning, no score. Matlack checks his runner, goes to first base, and sends it his back. For you St. Louis fans listening, you'll get a charge out of the fact that last night they called the 22nd rule 
on Kuzman. He's same. There's a bouncer wide at first. It's a base hit. Senate going to second. Try to go to third as he stumbles, but he knows that Staub can't throw, and he's in there. Rusty has no arm. He's been hurt. So the Pirates have runners at first and third. The umpires, after the Pirates played the Cardinals in St. Louis, in Pittsburgh, had heard about my raising heck about the 22nd rule. So they called it on Jim Rooker later on. We go into St. Louis and play there, as you fans know, and Alan Roboski went to 27 seconds, and Simmons was smart enough to get up and call time, so they didn't call it, let it go. The same umpires come in here, and last night they called it on Kuzman. That shows me a lot of uh, thinking. Called it at the wrong time. Here's Oliver, one for two. Runners at first and third. Nobody out. Low from Matlack. I'll say one thing. I like Alan Roboski. I like him because he makes me mad. Because he's on the other club. What I mean, I'd like to say is I wish he were pitching for us. Matlack. One ball, no strikes. Matlack delivers. Swing and a miss by Al. Mets have some action going. Uh, Randy Sterling is loosening a right-hander. Senate at third and Sanguin at first. Nobody out. No score. Sixth inning. One and one to Oliver. High by Matlack. Ball two. Two and one. This is the first time the Pirates have had a runner to third base tonight off Matlock. Sanguin tried to bunt in the, this inning and then hit an outside pitch to right. 2-1 delivery to Oliver. High pop-up in the infield. There'll be no advance by anybody. Garrett is waiting for it. And hauls it in, one out. That'll bring up Willie Stodgill. Struck out in the first inning and singled up in the middle in the fourth. One out, runners at first and third to Willie Stargell. Madlock got a big out there when he pops up Al Oliver. Now he's got to do the same thing to Stargell and stay away from the base hit with Zisk, and he's got it made. Sent it open with a single inside third that Ayala was able, because of where he played, hold it to a single and not a double. Otherwise, the ball that Sanguian hit would have been a run-scoring single. Amazing how Ayala would play him on the line in that situation. Maybe it's just because he's a rookie and doesn't know where else to play him. Worked out all right, didn't it? Pitch to Stargell. Swing and a miss. Strike one. <laughs> you hit a ball right over third down the left field line, you expect two bases out of it. You didn't get it because Ayala was playing him on the line. Ball and one again. Runners lead at first and third. Matlack to Stargell. Wilbur fouls out of play to the left, and he's out in front, 0-2. Oh Cardinals have their game in hand. They beat the Cubbies 10-4. Gibson the winner, although behind him came Folkers, Garmin, and Bear. Detore, Hooten, Frailing, Burris, and Hudson for the Cubs with Joe Torrey and Mike Tyson homering. 0-2 to Stodgill in a moment by Matlack. Upstairs for a ball. 1-2. and two. and Palmer dueling Milwaukee Palmer, Baltimore no score in a six and a half at Baltimore one ball two strikes here to Stargell Matlack kicks throws it in Stargell fly ball deep center field back goes Don Hahn one hands the ball drops it and it's a run score Sangian coming to third will hold there as Stargell pulls in at second base and they rule they double Glove 
glove. But it was hit straight away, the hardest for an outfielder to handle. And he went right to the 410 mark and couldn't hold it. So the Pirates lead now, 1-0, as Stargell drives in his 95th run of the year. The Mets will bring the infield up to the batter, Richie Zisk, and they indicate they're going to walk him. Let's see what they are going to do. They're indicating this right now. Matlack a little upset. I think he feels he should be trading. They're going to walk Robertson. There's no question with what Sangi is. Sten is going to score from third. But he wouldn't be in this spot if they catch that ball. He'd have two out and a runner at uh, first and second. Or rather, a runner at uh, first base. Maybe Sangi could have tagged up and gone to second, but the way he was running the bases, he'd have only been able to get back to first. So it makes quite a difference in this ball game. But he paid her to hold that ball on a smash to deep center field by Will Stargell. Now the bases are loaded with one out to Bobby Robertson, who doubled into the gap in right center field and lined into a double play in the fourth. That's the third one. now drops back to double play depth. Pirates leading one nothing have the bases loaded. One out. Matlack working. Randy Sturley pitching in the bullpen warming up. Pitch to Robertson. Swing foul straight back. Bob doubled as we told you back in the second inning into right center field. And then lined into a double play in the fourth right to the third baseman. by Matlack from the stretch. Robertson a swing. Strike two. Paid attendance here tonight, 17,440. Pirates lead 1-0. Have the bases loaded one out in the sixth inning. Nothing and two to Bobby Robertson. Outfield straight away and deep. Sanguin at third. Stodgill at second. Zisk at first. Here's the 0-2. Change up. Bobby started to go and saved it. Appeal at first and say no. Played umpire, first base umpire Harry Wendelstadt. Man, there's a ton of meat on the sacks for the Pirates. And Sanguin, Stodgill, and Zisk. What a fearsome middle three they'd make. One ball, two strikes. Matlack having the sign now from Dyer, who sets to the outside of the plate, away from the right-hand batting Robertson. Bobby hits a fly ball, deep right field, a stop. This should get a run. Sangian's tagging. And is coming in. Here's the throw by Stobb. Not in time. The ball gets away from Dyer. And now Matlack comes up, fires it to this, and they got him out. This pull the rock on the baseline. <laughs> but they get a run. Sanguian scores. I have to call this double play for you again. Sanguian scores on the sacrifice fly by Bob Robertson. And uh, that knocks him in with a second run. Stodgill went over to uh, third base on a throwing error charged to stop. And the backing man was Matlack, who grabbed the ball and fired it up to Mion, and they nailed Zisk for a double play. So the inning showed two runs, three hits. They haven't rolled an error, but they got to roll an error, allowing uh, one man to get over to third and one left. And we go to the bottom of the sixth. The Pirates lead two to nothing. Well, I've seen some official scoring, but they've ruled no error on that play. They say that Stodgill went to third on the throw to the plate. That's after he stopped it, uh, didn't even move. And he didn't move at all until the throw got by the catcher. Because he didn't want to even take the chance of gambling of being out at third. 
Well, as it turns out, Jess did. He went up to second, and he was out. So the play on him went nine to one to four. All right, the batter hits a spanking shot. That's uh, Dyer down to shortstop. Mendoza throws low. Robertson holds one out. Recapping the sixth inning, Stennett single, Sanguian single in the third. Oliver popped the third. Stargell doubled off the glove of Hahn in dead center field, knocking in Stennett, sending Sanguian to third. They walked Zisk intentionally. Robertson flied to stop in right. His throw to the plate not in time to get Sanguian. When the throw got away, Stargell went to third. Matlack threw up to second base, and he nailed Zisk trying to go up into second. So the inning showed two runs for the Pirates, three hits, no errors as ruled here, and one Pirate left. We're in the bottom of the sixth, and one ball, no strikes to Garrett, who struck out his first time up. The Pirates lead 2 nothing. Royce working 2-0 to Garrett. Allowed one hit, Benny Aiella. And he was doubled up a moment later. Bouncer down to first base. Big hop up for Bobby Roberts. And he'll run the bag. And there'll be two down. And Matlack will be the batter. Matlack in Pittsburgh had two singles and a double. Knocking in a couple of runs on his own behalf. Tonight he's 0 for 1. Milwaukee and Baltimore are scoreless at Baltimore at the end of seven. That is Coburn and Palmer. Rain delay yet? Now postponed, New York. Cleveland has been postponed. Still rain delay in Detroit. Boston waiting to play there, hopefully. I guess that means doubleheader tomorrow for the Yankees. And the rain's heading this way, they say. <laughs> That's all we need. 1-0 to Matlock. Down low from Royce, ball two. Boy, you don't want to play double headers at this stage of the game if you can help it. Two balls, no strikes. Strike, two and one. Pirates leading two nothing here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Count three and one as he swept that side with his fastball. Three balls and a strike. Royce back on the 3-1 pitch. Sends a strike and Matlack taking all the way. Giants batting in the sixth. The Reds are pulling back in there a little bit. They now have it into a 3-2 ball game. San Francisco on top by a point. 3-2 delivery to Matlack. Strike three called. And that will retire the side. And Royce gets his second strike out. And through the first six innings, there have been exactly 18 men facing with the aid of a double play. At the end of six, the Pirates lead 2 nothing. Well, we go to the final three innings here with the Pirates out in front 2 to nothing. In the seventh inning, Hebner, Mendoza, and the pitcher, Jerry Royce, to go against John Matlack. Hebner was at bat when Zisk attempting to move to second base on the throw by Staub that got through Dyer. Zisk was out, and that ended the inning. Just inside, ball one. Matt Black wanted to know where that pitch was. And Matt Williams said the ball was inside. Matt Black said, if I throw it any farther inside, I'm going to hit him. Pirates finally scoring some runs for Royce after 26 consecutive scoreless innings. Curve ball taken by Richie in the count of one and one. But Stargell, the key guy in this ball game in the sixth inning with that wicked shot to center field that Hahn had in his glove and then lost a double. Richie swings on a curve. He didn't get it strike two. Hebner usually hangs in well against left-handed pitching, but that time, really out in front, fought on away from the pitch and looked rather foolish on it. Matt like can do that to you. Third ball, he started to go, but checks it off, and the count is two and two. <laughs> they want an appeal again at third, they don't get it. Oh, 
Two balls, two strikes. Richie walked in the fifth inning, but erased on a double play. An attempted bunt by Royce. Swings and misses strike three. You got him that time in the curveball. Fourth strikeout for Matlack. Mendoza, all for two. Step in. Pirates leading two to nothing into the top of the seventh inning. Danny Galbraith attending the game. with, uh, I believe, Howie Hake also. Pirate top scout. Curveball. In there, taken by Mendoza. Stack one. Round ball, and it's foul off the third base side, right at the... near the plate. The count of 0-2. Scrollless ball game in Baltimore. Palmer has given up three hits. Jim Colburn has given up four for Milwaukee. They're in the bottom of the eighth inning with Baltimore batting. No score. Phillies in Montreal. No, or Montreal leads two to nothing into the bottom of the seventh inning. They're going to make that Montreal leading two to nothing in the bottom of the seventh. The 0-2 pitch by Matt Lack to Mendoza. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Five strikeouts. It's the second time he's nailed Mendoza. Matt Lack just overpowering Mario. First time Mario's had an opportunity to bat, and he's looking at a rather tough left-handed pitcher. New York-Cleveland game has been postponed, postponed because of rain. They'll play a doubleheader tomorrow. down, nobody on. Two-nothing lead for the Pirates in the top of the seven. Royce the batter and the pitch by Matlack to him is up high for a ball. San Francisco with a three-run homer by Bonds in the first, leading Cincinnati three to two into the bottom of the sixth. Two down, nobody on. Two-nothing lead for the Pirates in the top of the seven. Royce the batter and the pitch by Matlack to him is up high for a ball. San Francisco with a three-run homer by Bonds in the first, leading Cincinnati 3-2 to two into the bottom of the sixth. The 1-0 pitch, swing and a miss by Royce. One ball, one strike. Fastball by Matlack, missed inside. Backs Jerry off the plate. Two balls and a strike. The 2-1 pitch on the corner. Taking strike two. Pirates have had seven hits. The Mets have had only one. And Royce has faced just 18 batters over the front six innings. The only base hit, Benny Ayala got a single. He was erased on a double play in the fifth inning. And a and a foul by Royce, just behind Duffy Dyer, the catcher. Two balls, two strikes. Royce fouling back out of play as Matlack challenged him with a fastball again. Saturday should be a big crowd here. They have their annual fan appreciation day and they draw well with it. The 2-2 two -two pitch to Rice. Hop foul down the left field line. Ayala giving chase, but it's into the crowd. Well, the youngster Ayala resembles so much Felipe Lou when he uh, first came up. And he's got a great arm. He made a fine play on the ball hit by Stanton in the sixth inning to hold it to a single. He got there quickly and more important, made a very strong, accurate throw to Felix Neon. Matt Lack's 2-2 two -two pitch to Royce. Round ball off the first base side. Milner retreating, shovels onto Matt Lack for the out at first and just did get there. Well, Milner waited a long time to throw that ball to Matt Lack. Royce almost beat the play. 3-1 goes the out on Royce. We get down an order in the seventh inning. We'll go to the bottom of the seventh, and the Pirates lead 2 to nothing. 
You know, fans, down through my years in this great game of baseball, I've had the pleasure of watching some pretty raw rookies develop into 24 carat superstars. I'm talking about guys like Maz and Pete Rose and Stargell, Clemente, and oh, so many, many more. They didn't all play the same position, but they all had a lot of things in common. Hustle, dedication to the game, and above all, the desire to take advantage of every opportunity to improve themselves. And you know, when it comes to the money game, you can improve your chances, too. Take saving, for instance. At Union National Bank, you have a lot of opportunities to save. You can save in a Union National Savings Account and have money for your future. You can save pesky service charges with a free Union National Personal or Business Checking Account. And you can save time, trouble, money, and energy if you take advantage of Union National's free bank-by-mail service. The opportunities are all there at Union National. They're still a bank. Member FDIC. Royce has faced 18 batters over the front six innings, but he gave up a hit in the fifth inning to Benny Ayala. That's been the only Met base runner. He was erased on a double play off the bat of John Milner. Pirates lead two to nothing. Hahn, Mion, and Staub, the one, two, three batters to go against Royce here in the seventh. for two, bounced to the mound, and flied to center field. Rice with the pitch is in there, the strike. The windup and the 0-1 pitch to Don Hahn, changeup, missed away, one ball and one straight. Another left-hander goes tomorrow for the Pirates and for the New York Mets. The sixth consecutive game. Left-handers at work. McGraw and Jim Rooker tomorrow afternoon at 2.15. One one pitch by Royce. Shot up the middle. Base hit. Almost got Royce. And Don Hahn open for the single in the Mets' seventh inning. That'll bring up Felix Neon. Wickedly hit ball that Royce uh, had the skipper up to get away from and came down heavily on his derriere. The Mets' second hit. Mayard bounced to second, bounced to short. We should like to get one of those right now. This guy has been a tough out in the series this year with the Mets, hitting well over 350 against us. He takes a pitch inside, ball one. Staub waiting on deck. Hebner up close at third base. Hahn leading from first, the pitch to Mion, swings and misses, tried to go to right field. One ball and one strike. The count of one and one, the pitch, and it is bounced to third. Hebner can't get it to cover his head down the left field line for a base hit. A weekly hit ball had just got over the head of Ricky Hebner. He was in close, and that would have been a double play ball, but he picked a high hop over Hebner's head. Now yeah, the Mets are threatening for the first time. Stobbed the batter. 0 for 2. We uh, will start to get some activity, I believe, in our bullpen. Some staring out there. Race the victim of a bad hop that time. Hebner started to go back on the ball. Looked like he was going to make a play, and it just went over the top of his glove for a base hit. Sanguin, Stennett, and Royce talking it over as Art Williams comes out to break it up. The Mets, for the first time tonight, have a runner at second base. And the worst part about it for the Pirates... They've got a runner at first, too, with nobody out in the meat of the order coming up. Stop the batter. The pitch by Royce. He's punting, and he takes a strike. Throw through to second base, and back in time is Hahn. 
Stabbed that time. Squared around a bunch, but took it. Maybe that's just a decoy. They have Benny Aiello waiting on deck. You know how many times this year that Stab has sacrificed? Once prior to this. He's bunting, and it's taken. Strike two. Was it a foul tip, I believe? It was. Strike two. Out of the glove of Sangvian. Count of on two on Starb. He will be stepping out. He takes a look at third base coach Eddie Yost. But more than likely now, back to hitting away. And what Royce would like to do is get the ground ball here at somebody. Turnover two. The look at second. The 0-2 pitch. Swinging and a miss. Strike three. Her ball strikes out Starb. Yeah, Rusty's inability to sacrifice. And Royce made it pay off with a big strikeout. The double play now live with Benny Ayala stepping in. He singled in the fifth inning for the Mets' first hit of the ball game on a high fastball. First time up. Royce got him to pop up to the first baseman, Bobby Robertson. This guy, a good fastball hitter, so it looks. And that's what he hit his last time up. The pitch by Jerry is a curveball. High fly, center field. Well hit. Back is Oliver. Back on the warning track, both runners tagging. The runner from second comes over, but Neon holds at first base. Long fly ball, the deepest part of the ballpark, by Benny Ayala. Two down. Felix Neon holding at first. Don Hahn has moved to third. And John Hillmer will be the batter. He flied to right field in the second inning, bounced into a double play in the fifth inning. Now, Royce, after giving up consecutive singles, is one out away from getting out of it here. He leads by a 2-0 score. Fastball inside, ball one. He really unloaded a good fastball that time. Milner, a good long ball hitter, and he's got great power to left center field or if he pulls the ball. He is their best home run hitter. Jerry checking me on at first base. The pitch underway. Foul back out of play. And Milner had a good rip that time on a fastball out over the plate. Well, the pressure of a pen and drive, and it's hanging on every pitch here. And the Cardinals already have one this afternoon. 10 to 4 in Chicago. Pirates need this to stay even with them. 84 wins, 73 defeats the Cardinals have. The runners lead first and third. The 1-1 one, one pitch. He is down low. Two balls and a strike. You say Art Williams calling a fine ball game here tonight. Only his second year in the National League. This is the same crew he had in the New York, or in the St. Louis City. The 2 1 pitch to Milner. Round ball, second base. Center will get it. He's got him at first base, and Royce gets out of it. Now some great pitching by Royce, and the big play was striking out Rusty Stubb. The inability of Stab to sacrifice cost the Mets at least one run and who knows, maybe more. No runs on a couple of hits, no errors, and Royce leaves two. We've completed seven. Pirates lead two to nothing. Can you remember what it meant in school to get a perfect paper? One with a gold star on it? Right up there in the upper left-hand corner. A goldie. Wow, you remember those? Those are the papers you took home for your mom to post on the kitchen door for everyone to see. Well, do you know that you can almost recapture that thrill today? How? Well, with a personal savings account at Union National Bank. The same feeling of pride and accomplishment and satisfaction occurs when you scan your own deposit book and watch your savings grow with interest credits. And don't forget, a Union National Savings Account pays a full 5% annual interest compounded and payable quarterly, all of which makes it a little like getting a gold star every 90 days. And incidentally, Union National is the major local bank that pays annual interest on a quarterly basis. So why not stop in today at any one of their 51 offices? You'll find that at Union National, there's still a bank. Member FDIC.
The American League ball game down in Baltimore. They're into the bottom of the ninth inning with the Orioles in Milwaukee in a scoreless ball game. Jim Colburn against Jim Palmer. New York and Cleveland have been rained out. They'll play a doubleheader tomorrow. Boston and Detroit also still raining out there, but it's not been called. Stennett, Sankey, and Oliver will bat in the eighth inning against Matlack. The Pirates leading two to nothing. And a line shot foul off the third base side. Stennett has had two hits here tonight. In with 190 on the season, tied with Al Oliver in that category, leads the club. And just 10 away from a 200-hit season. In quite a year for Rennie Stenner at age 23. He is number four in the National League in hits. It's depending on what Lou Brock did today in Chicago. Foul back out of play by Rennie. And a count of 0-2. <laughs> Pirates will not have a Most Valuable Player Award winner, no doubt about that. Prime candidates, Lou Brock, and deservedly so, and Mike Schmidt, and I would guess Steve Garvey or Jimmy Wynn. But this guy has had some kind of a season for the Pirates. He's been valuable to us. Fastball up and in on Rennie. Made him duck the count of one ball and two strikes. Now, Charlie Dean, old friend of mine from Greensburg, stepping in to say hello. The wind-up on the 1-2 pitch by Matlack, swinging and a miss on a curveball. It was in the dirt, picked up by Dyer, and he tags him at the plate. That's the sixth strikeout by Matlack. You notice Matlack going to more breaking balls against Hebner and Stennett here in the last two times up. They have been jumping on that fastball. See what he does to Sanguian. He was walked, bounced into a double play, and singled and scored our second run. Pirates leading 2 to nothing. The pitch by Matlack, <clears throat> curveball up high, ball one. <laughs> Matlack's 1-0 pitch underway to Manny. It is down low, another off-speed delivery, two balls and no strikes. Matlack will be the fourth batter to come up in the Mets' uh, eighth inning. They're loosening somebody in their bullpen. The pitch to Sagan, curveball, bends in there, taken by Manny, two balls and a straight. <laughs> Looks like Nino Espinosa, right-hander in the Met bullpen. <clears throat> Tug McGraw will be working tomorrow against Jim Rooker. Two-one pitch to Manny, outside of the fastball this time, the first fastball he's thrown him. Three balls and a straight. Nothing lead for the Pirates. The 3-1 pitch to Sagan. Grounded in the hole and on into left field. A base hit. Picked off by Martinez in shallow left field. But he can't make a play. And Sagan picks up his second hit in three at-bats. And it brings up Al Oliver. Scoop single. His first time up. Almost through the glove of Martinez. Ball pickle off his glove into left field. A wickedly hit ball. He struck out in the third. And popped up the third base in the sixth inning. Looked like a big out for Matlack. One after Stennett and Sangin had single, putting runners at first and third with nobody out. He got Oliver to pop up in the infield. And after Stargell, no balls and two strikes. Willie hit a slider out over the plate. Deepest part of the ballpark for a double. Oliver swings and foul tips, strike one. Chased a bad pitch up around the middle of the cap. Now with his base hit in the first inning, in with 189. Or make that 190 hits. Curveball away. One ball and one strike. Oliver last year had 191 hits, most in his major league career. But one one delivery. Foul back out of play. And let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Pirate Baseball Network. All 
One ball and two strikes on Al Oliver with the runners first and Sangi and one out in the eighth inning. The Pirates lead two to nothing. Hard shot right side, base hit. Sangi in the grounding second. He'll come to third. The throw by Staub. It's going to be close. He is in there safe. Cut off by Martinez. The throw a bit offline and Martinez wisely cutting it off. Sangi in with a head first slide. Is at third base. Runners at first and third. One down and again. Stargill stepping up with that same situation he had in the sixth inning. Oliver now has equaled his hit total for last year, 191 hits, the most he's had in his major league career that started in 1969. Scoops two for four tonight, and he has gone nine for 13 in the last three ball games. <laughs> Matlack struck Stargell out in the first inning with runners at first and second. But he singled in the fourth on a curveball, doubled the center field off the glove of Hahn to drive in the Pirates' first run on a slider in the sixth. Here's the pitch by Matlack. He started to go, but checks off the fastball up high. Ball one. Pirates leading two to nothing, but a fly ball or a base hit can give them another run. And if it's one of Stargell's long base hits, it could give us three. But Matlack doesn't throw too many home run balls. Oliver leads from first. Sanguian from third, the pitch to Willie. Swings and misses the fastball. Strike one. Matlack has uh, thrown only eight home runs in 250-some innings of pitching. So I told you he keeps the ball in the park. A 1-1 one -one delivery. Up high. Fastball again. Two balls in the straight. Matlack shut out the Pirates the last time around, bidding Jerry Royce, and Royce trying to do the same trick on him. Pirates lead 2 nothing. The look at first, the pitch to Stardom, foul, back out of play, and the count of two and two. And the pressure of having to carry the big bat that produces the runs is uh, very definitely a pressure and a responsibility in Stardom. Handles it so well. He has driven in 95. And is shooting for a 100 RBI season, which would be his sixth in the fourth consecutive year that he's had more than 100. He grounds a second base, they'll get a double play. Four to six to three on the double play. Ball was hit up the middle, but did not get through. There's Felix Mion cut it off there and had an easy fourth play at second and a throw to first base, retiring Stargell. No runs on a couple of hits, no errors. We left one, we go to the bottom of the eighth, and the Pirates lead two to nothing. How would you like to see Old Blue Eyes, Frank Sinatra, in concert Wednesday night, October 9th? Just enter the KDKA Old Blue Eyes contest. Cause I only have eyes. When we call you, all you've got to do is name the musical blue-eyed artist we'll play. Doesn't anybody know those days? You're a winner. You've got two tickets to see Old Blue Eyes. Send us your name, address, and phone number. The address, Old Blue Eyes, KDKA Pittsburgh, 15222. Identify our blue eyes and see Frank Sinatra Wednesday night, October 9th at the Civic Arena. KDKA's call for action gets things done. If you've got a consumer problem, call for action volunteers will either resolve your complaint themselves or direct you to the agency that can help you. Next time, remember KDK's call for action at 333-9370. Call for action, weekdays 11 to 1. <laughs> the eighth inning for the New York Mets, the six, seven, eight batters, Martinez, Dyer, and Garrett will bat against Jerry Rice. It's out in front, two to nothing. They're into overtime in Baltimore. The Brewers failed to score in the tenth inning. No score there as the tight duel between Colburn and Palmer. Well, we've got a chance. Let's pause twenty seconds for our local station. The Pirates have really got to put it together now. And if you want them to drive for five and take the World Series too, now's the time to back the bus. Show them we're with them all the way. KDKA thinks Pirate Baseball is a serious business. The windup by Rice to pitch to Martinez is a foul behind home plate. Strike one. He tried to bunt the ball. 
and got an odd score out of Montreal. The Philadelphia Phillies didn't score in the ninth inning. They get the Expos batting in the bottom of the ninth. They lead two to nothing. There's no need to bat in the bottom of the ninth inning. So that must be a get another printout on that one. Concepcion homered for the Reds. That ties the game with San Francisco 3-3. Round ball, a shortstop, and goes in. High hop, throws, he got him a three. Martinez bouncing to the shortstop, Mendoza, one down in the Mets' eighth inning. That'll bring up Duffy Dyer, gone 0 for 2, bouncing to third and bouncing to short. Now, Lorraine has stopped out in Detroit after a two hour delay. They're going to play baseball there, but the Cleveland Yankee ball game postponed. They'll play a doubleheader tomorrow. Baltimore and Milwaukee, no score, into the bottom of the 10th inning. Here's a pitch by Royce to Duffy Dyer. And it is a fly ball, right center field. Pretty well hit, just going back. Has room in time to get there on the warning track. He's got it. Duffy going for the long ball. Hit it very deep to right center field. Two down, Wayne Garrett will be the batter. Garrett struck out. Bounced out to the first baseman, Bob Robertson, in the sixth inning. He and Sanguian doing some visiting at home plate. Finally getting in the head. 2 nothing lead for the Pirates. Nobody on. Bottom of the eighth inning. The pitch to Garrett is down low. Ball one. This is some kind of pitching that Royce is doing here. You have to get that type of game against John Matlack. Pitch down low. Ball two. Behind, 2-0 and on Garrett. St. Guillen out in front of the plate. <coughs> Saying something to him, taking his time. Matt Black, the on-deck batter, but they're listening. Somebody in their bullpen. And Royce in with a strike. Two balls and a strike. Royce has had 13 complete ball games. Jim Rooker with 15, leading the staff. The 2-1 pitch to Garrett. Swings and misses strike two. Foul tip. Steve Coffin and I think uh, Phil Necro lead the National League in complete game 17. The windup and the 2-2 pitch by Royce to Garrett. Pops into the left center field. Tough play coming on start. He'll still coming, still coming. He can't get there, basically. A blooper off the fist by Garrett. And he'll pinch it. George Theodore will bat for John Matlack. And a weekly hit ball by Garrett. Too far out for Mendoza to make a play. And too far in for Stodgill again. And Garrett continues to find base hits against us. The stork, George Theodore, hitting at just 159, but went against left-handed pitching. Has hit uh, one home run, driven in six on the air. I think he has. He one home run and one RBI, that's all he had. Theodore pinch hitting for John Matlack. And we'll check the Met bullpen again to see who's thrown out there. They have switched off. They're going to Jack Aker. The tying run at the plate for the Mets and Theodore. Yeah, at first, the pitch underway. Fly ball down the left field line. It's a base hit into the corner. Stodgill will play it off the wall. They're going to wave the runner in. Now well, they'll hold on a third base. It's a double. Theodore doubling. And the Pirates are in trouble here with Don Ron coming up from the time run at second base. Now yeah, Wayne Garrett's blue pitch keeps it alive. And Theodore, on the very first pitch, rips a double down the left field line. Stodgill played the carom beautifully, and he held the runner at third base, Wayne Garrett. He's going to find a way to keep Wayne Garrett off the bases. We haven't been able to do that yet. Royce has done a job on him, and now a tough uh, situation. Pawn singled his last time up, and he fouls back just above our head for a strike. Third. 
Theodore at second. 2 nothing lead for the Pirates. And the pitch is a foul ball back out of play. Strike two. Race going to fastball. Uh, John Hahn has them 0-2. The Mets starting to come back against Royce here in the late innings. He had retired 18 in a row, but the seventh inning got into problems, and again here in the eighth inning, after he retired two in a row, a single and a double. And the tying run at second base. The windup in the 0-2 pitch, it is hit off the third base side weakly, and it bounces foul. That would have been a base hit, and a run would have come in, and fortunately for the Pirates, it kicked foul. Mets got a run like that last night. Rock Pemberton, pinch hitting, hit a number off the third baseline to get a run in. Final score out of uh, Montreal, the Expos win it 2 to nothing. a four-hitter by Mike Torrey. He's had a big year. The race with a count of 0-2, needs a big out here on Don Hahn, with runners at second and third. The 0-2 pitch. And it is low and away. One ball and two strikes. Hahn almost jumped after that pitch. <laughs> yeah, the pressure building for the Pirates. The Mets have nothing to worry about at all. They're out of this thing. If the Pirates need a victory, the Cardinals won this afternoon. Royce with a lot of time here between pitches gets the sign. The one-two pitch to Hahn. And it's inside. Gets away from Sankey, but not far enough for any advance. Two balls, two straight. Royce with a long pause. Hits the sign, the 2-2 two pitch. Round foul again off there. It is Hans hanging tough here. Joey Sangley grabbing at the ball. The Pirates loosen Justin and Hernandez in our bullpen. Pirates, two runs, nine hits, and no errors. The Mets, no runs, five hits, and no errors, but they're threatening here in the eighth inning with Garrett at third, Theodore at second. The 2-2 pitch underway to Hahn, and it is hit the game foul off there. Hit the ball at somebody, Don, and let's get out of here. the tough guy to strike out is 35 walks, 34 strikeouts. And he had more walks than strikeouts. You're pretty tough up there. He's been at bat 310 times. The windup and the 2-2 pitch to Hahn. Had it off third, and it's a foul ball again. Just foul. Mm. And he's hanging top on Rice. I'll tell you, he's battling him. ball would have easily scored Theodore because Hedner didn't get close to it at all. It was foul, just foul off the third base side. Royce trying to get that hard third out here in the eighth inning. The 2-2 two -two pitch again. And it is up high, ball three. He would like a decision on this guy because the fella coming up is a mighty, mighty tough out for us. Always has been Felix Mion. You know, the season just about riding on every pitch here now. Late in the season. This is our... We have six more, including this one. And tied to the Cardinals at the start of the day. The 3-2 pitch to Hahn. It is line drive left field base hit. One run is in. They're going to hold the run at third. And it is into the plate that the runner holds it there and holding it first base John Hunt. Two to one. The Pirates lead. But Neon up now with the goer and the tying run at third base. That's only the 26th RBI of the year for Don Hahn, but it's a mighty big one. Not so much for the Mets, certainly, but for a lot of listeners, I guess, out in St. Louis. A blue pitch by Wayne Garrett. He was hit on the fist with the pitch. Weakly hit to left field. Then Theodore on the first pitch. Wide one in the left field corner for a double. And Royce now pitching for his life here. Has run his at first and third. 
leading two to one beyond the bat. The pitch by Jerry. It is up to high. Ball one. The one out pitch. He's in there with a strike. One ball and one strike. Two are out, nobody on. And very quickly, the Mets have put together a single, a double, and a single. And have gotten back into the ball game, two to one. Pirates out in front. The look at first, the one-one pitch to me on. Grounded foul into the crowd off the first base side. The count of one and two. This guy, a tough out with two strikes on him. He just tries to hit the ball someplace. And more than that, he's successful. He's only struck out 12 times all year and over 500 times at bat. He's tough out. A better hitter with two strikes than he is any time. And Reese knows that. The runners lead, first and third. The pitch, and it is bounced to third base. Hebner comes up, bobbles the ball, picks the He got him at first. Oh, boy. Hebner bobbled the ball, lost the play at second, but had time to make the play at first. Now Royce gets out of it. And Litchie being congratulated for turning over the out. The inning shows one run on three hits, no errors, two left, and we'll go to the ninth inning. The Pirates lead two to one. Here's a tip from the old gunner on how you can get the most for your food dollar. Be one of the many families who have switched to Super Dollar Markets. Super Dollar Markets have joined the fight against inflation. You'll find high-quality meats, the very precious to produce, and a wide selection of well-known national and local brands. All at prices that make your dollar have more sense. There's always a great plus for Super Dollar customers that's sometimes hard to find in most other large food markets. It's that wonderful, friendly feeling of welcome that puts you at ease the moment you walk through the door. Super Dollar folks are people who like people, and you can take it from the old gunner. They'll do everything they can to help you make that hard-earned dollar go a little further. Super Dollar markets are staffed with friendly people who know they can serve you better and save you more. So see for yourself. There's a lot of savings waiting for you at all Super Dollar markets. The inflation fighters, where your dollar has more sense and who serve you better and save you more. Start your food shopping at Super Dollar markets this week and feel the difference. Bring on Jack Aker, a veteran pitcher, to pitch the ninth inning against the Pirates. He has won two and lost two this year. He'll face this. Robertson, a couple of right-handed batters, and a left-handed hitting Richie Hebner. The Pirates, leading by just one run, two to one, need a victory here tonight to stay even with the Cardinals, who are a winner this afternoon, 10 to 4 over the Chicago Cubs. Gibson beating Tom Detour. But the Cubs had 13 hits, scored only four times. Gibson kept him in the ballpark. As did Fulkers, Garmin, and Bear. Next uh, ninth inning has the meat of their order coming up. Staub, Ayala, and Milner. Now, this game is going right down to the wire with only a one-run margin. The Bucks would like to get some breathing room here. Fisk has gone over two. Walked in the sixth inning intentionally, and Bobby Robertson hit a sacrifice fly that now turns out to be the deciding run in the ball game. Aker, a right-hander, that throws sidearm, good sinking fastball. Pitched by Jack, and it's a high pop-up off the right side. Rusty Stodd, got him. You know, Felix Neon calling for it, makes the grab. Now, this popped up the right field, very shallow. Richie is on a real tough time of it since uh, he pulled out the Philly series. But he's had a whale of a season. Hitting at uh, 310 coming into this game. 97 RBIs in quite a year for his second year in the major leagues. Bobby Robertson, double, line to third into a double play and hit a big sacrifice fly in the sixth that gave us our go-ahead run. We'll lead the run now. Pitch away by Aker. Ball one. Ball one pitch by Aker. Just outside. Two balls and no strikes. Baker usually has trouble with left-handed batters, but Hefner waiting on deck. Hopeful of uh, maybe getting up there with a runner on. 
The 2-0 pitch. Low and away, ball three. Pirates missed an opportunity in the eighth inning. Some good pitching by Matlack getting the double play ball off the bat of uh, Stargell with runners at first and third to get out of that one. The 3-0 pitch, and it's in there, taking strike one. The 3-1 delivery, added foul off third over the head of Bob Skinner. Full count of three and two. Matt Lackin. Royce dual even over the front five, and the Pirates finally broke through for two runs in the sixth inning. The three-two pitch, up high, ball four. He lost him. Now the walk gives the Bucks a base runner, and that'll bring up Hebner. Yes, he was 17 home runs. He's driven in 64. Aker has thrown uh, seven home run balls in just 57 innings of pitching, compared to Matt Lack's eight and 250 something. He's had trouble over the years at left-handed batters. They're going to pinch around Bobby Robertson. Miguel Delaunay, who has been playing baseball now for, I think, three years in the minor leagues and has broken two stolen base records consecutively the last two seasons. Miguel Delaunay pinch running for Bobby Robertson. <laughs> they call him DeLeon and everything but Delaunay. D-I-L-O-N-E. D. Lonet. A very promising prospect for the Pirates. He's at first base. Hebner stepping in against Jack Aker and the Pirates ninth inning leading 2-1. to one. The Pirates out in front. Aker from the stretch. The look at first and the fifth. He's stealing. Ball is fouled out of play. Strike one. D. Lonet had a big jump that time. But Hebner, first ball hitting. Foul. And Hebner looking and saying, what do you want? Skinner's point at second base. He said, we got a runner down there. We'll let him get back. They may have had the steal on that time, and Hebner evidently uh, not aware of it. Delaunay just getting back to first base. Baker looks over. And he comes to first, throws over, drawing Milner off the bag. Delaunay diving back in head first. Rich, I'd like to get a runner in there. The look at first, the throw over. He's back again in time, diving head first. Only, uh, I think, 19 years of age, Delaunay. He's going. The ball is lined foul. Out of play down the right field line. Strike two on Richie. No balls, two strikes on Hebner. Elone losing his batting helmet out at second base and going to take time to get back there again. The youngster has the graceful movements of a fast runner and he just looks like he has the youthful enjoyment of just playing flat out running hard. The count of 0-2 on Hebner. We'll look at first base, a long pause, and the pitch. Way outside, a fastball, one ball and two strikes. That brought Dyer out very quickly. lead for the Pirates. Ninth inning with a runner at first. One down. Aker comes to Hebner. The ball is a high fly to center field. Ron Hahn will make the play. Delaunay halfway. We'll come back to first base. Aker takes care of Hebner. And it'll bring up Mario Mendoza. He's going to bat. Looks uh, hopeful that uh, Hebner might be able to find a gap someplace. And Delaunay would able, be able to score. Richie unable to come through that type of a hit. Popped it up in the center field. Mendoza has uh, struck out two times in three at-bats against 
John Matlock. No home runs, 15 RBIs. And a curve down low, ball one. And this is the first start Mendoza has had in some time. Tavares getting a rest tonight. The only at first base. He's stealing. The ball is a foul out of play behind the uh, home play. <laughs> Every time he gets a jump, somebody's hitting away and fouling the ball, and he's got to come back. One ball, one strike. Boston Red Sox, after a two-hour delay in Detroit, scored four runs in the first inning off Woody Freeman. Remember, the Yankees scored four runs off Woody Freeman with George Metis pitching, and that's all he got. Into the top of the ninth inning out in Cincinnati. They're tied 3 3. The Giants, Neil and they running again, and ball inside. Throw through to second. He's safe. <laughs> and the Guel Dione steals second base. A good throw by Duffy Dye. But the speed of the Oscar gives him the stolen base. That's his second in uh, two attempts. Base open, Royce, the yard deck batter. The count of two and one on Mendoza. They will pitch to him, however. I think they're going to. Dyer looking over. They will. Let's stay with Mendoza. And the base hit here would look good. Two on pitch. And it is hit foul off the first base side. A curve ball. Two balls, two strikes. Well, if Prime is going to get any more out, he's going to have to do it from the shower room because Lamanchik replaced him in the first inning. The count is two and two on Mendoza, and the pitch foul at the feet of Dyer, sinking fastball. The Orioles are out in the tenth. Milwaukee's out in the top of the eleventh. They're into the bottom of the eleventh inning at Baltimore. No score in that ball game. Palmer and Colburn still uh, pitching. The two-two pitch by Aker to Mendoza. Pops him up behind home plate. Duffy Dyer has a play, I believe, near the railing. He's got it. Another return to this. Well, the Pirates fail to score. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left, and we go to the shaky ninth inning. Pirates leading by one run, two to one. Just imagine yourself in this situation. It's about 90 degrees out, and you're on your way back to work from lunch, and you want to run a quick errand, which takes all of 10 minutes. But when you go back to your car, uh-oh, hey, hey, it won't start. And you thought cars only had trouble starting in cold weather. Well, hot weather is sometimes even harder on your battery than cold weather is. That's usually because blistering heat can help cause high internal engine friction, which can make it hard to start your car. So you need a battery that will perform no matter what the weather, hot or cold. And that's the Delco Energizer. It gives an instantaneous burst of power for hot weather starts or cold weather starts. Now you know more about the Delco Energizer. And that's about all anybody has to know about batteries. Delco batteries are distributed by Valley Auto Parts Company, 329 Airbrake Avenue in Wilmerding, McPeak Tire Corporation, 240 Boulevard of the Elias in downtown Pittsburgh, and Penn Hills Auto Parts at 119 Penn Oak Drive in Penn Hills. The ninth inning for the New York Mets. It'll be Rusty Staub, Benny Ayala, and John Milner to bat against... Jerry Royce, the Pirates leading by just one run, two to one. The Mets have been knocking at Royce in the seventh, the eighth, and they start off here in the ninth with the beat of their orders, Scott, Ayala, and Milner. Dave Augustine has gone into right field, replacing Richie's this. Kirk Kirkpatrick goes to first base. So those changes defensively for the Pirates. Kirkpatrick at first base, Augustine in right field. Pirates uh, loosening Dave Jesty in their bullpen. Staub off for three. Nice well, got a big out on him in the seventh inning. The pitch by Jerry, and it is a curve down low, ball one. And that first out in the ninth inning is so very, very important. The one open. High pop up, and I believe foul out of play. Patrick near the railing, but it's uh, 
into the crowd. He tried to get in there, but couldn't make a play. And there were no fans going to let him get in there, I'll tell you. He might have been able to if he was playing in Pittsburgh, but the ball was in about the second row, and there's no way the Mets are going to fight to let him get in there. The fans. One ball, one strike on Rusty. The nail batter here at Shea Stadium. The windup on the 1 1 pitch by Rice. Swing and a miss, strike two. Rice went away with a breaking ball that time. The windup on the 1 2 pitch by Jerry. Fouled out of play down the left field line. Into the bottom of the 12th inning. Baltimore batting at the Baltimore. No score. You can bet the Yankees are doing some scoreboard watching on that. But one, two, pitch again to Roy. Line drive, left field, and it's a base hit for Scott. Well, the Mets get the guy they want on, the leadoff batter, and they have an opportunity to bunt here. And a pinch runner coming on for Rusty Stubb. comes on to pitch run for Rusty Stubb. Stubb uh, just went to left field with that ball. He gets his first hit of the night. But a big one for New York in the batter, Benny Aiello, with Schneck pinch running at first base. Pirates looking for the bunt. The look at first base. He squares around. It is taken. Stack one. Race got a big out in the seventh inning with runners at first and second. Stubb was attempting to bunt, and he struck him out. We could use that right here and get him to foul out and, or fail a bunt and hit him with a double play or something. Of all the hitters, however, this guy's hit the ball well against uh, Royce. A single and a fifth and a very high fly drive into center field in the seventh. Schneck at first base. The pitch, he squares around. He's popped it up foul. Sankey giving given chase. It is back out of play into the crowd. And the count is 0-2 on uh, Denny Ayala. A right-handed hitting rookie that was at Tidewater this year, where he hit 274. In his Major League debut against Houston, hit a home run his first time up off Tom Griffin. Native of the Dominican Republic. And as we mentioned earlier, he resembles so much Philippe Alou. Schneck at first base, Kirkpatrick holding against him. And the 8-2 pitch by Rice, underway. And it is outside a fastball. One ball, two strikes. Seems like there are no easy games. Last night, a rare exception to that. And even that got a little bit hairy in the night. The one, two pitch. Round ball, a shortstop. Comes up for Mendoza. The out at second base, the third to first. And double play! Ayala bounces into a 6-4-3 double play. And a fine feed by Mendoza, and Stennett turns it over. Uh, boy, is that a big one. The inability of the Mets to bun here tonight in the seventh inning and again in the ninth has been uh, harmful to them, but still one more out to go. 6-4-3 on the double play, and very quickly, things uh, look a bit brighter here. Milner, 0 for 3, but a good power hitter. Royce has to pitch carefully to him. 2-1 lead for the fight. The windup and the pitch by Jerry. It's underway. And he is in there. Strike one. This is some kind of a ball game. And the Pirates know that they are not going to get too many runs against the New York Mets pitching staff. And John Matlack and Jack Aker following him have proved that. The 0-1 pitch. Fly ball. Left field. Stradgill coming on. Coming on. He's got it. The Pirates capture a very, very big win. And Jerry Royce being congratulated for a tremendous effort here tonight. He had his problems in the 7th, 8th, and ninth, but he hung on, and he picks up his 16th win, equaling his total of last year, his best year, when he won 16 and lost 13. But Royce was there when we needed it tonight. We needed a well-pitched game against John Matlack and the Mets. We got it. The Pirates win it by the score of 2-1. to one. 
The skates and sticks have been silent all summer long, but on Saturday, October 5th, they'll spring to life. Penguins! Hi, this is Mike Lang, voice of the Penguins, inviting you to join KDKA for exciting Penguins hockey. We'll face off with the Philadelphia Flyers on October 5th for an exhibition game, and we'll be with the fans all the way to the playoffs. Don't miss the fastest sport in the world. Penguins hockey, beginning October 5th on KDKA. One, two, three, four, three, two, one, one, one. Hi, this is Gary the number one. If your inspection sticker has a number one on it, it's time to have your car inspected. Do you know the number on your inspection sticker? If your Pennsylvania inspection sticker is number one, now's the time to get your car inspected. Remember, do it now, before your number's up. Be a stickler for stickers. Well, the Pirates and the uh, Cardinals have five games remaining. And they are in a dead heat with five more to go. The Pirates, 84 and 73. The Cardinals. 84 wins, 73 defeats. And the ball game tonight, the Pirates came into this ballpark knowing that the Cardinals already had won by a big score of 10 to 4 against the Chicago Cubs this afternoon. Bob Gibson beating Tom DeTore. And they came in here knowing that they were going to have a tough battle facing a very strong left-hander, John Matlack, who had shut them out on a three-hitter the last time in Pittsburgh. They weren't disappointed because Matlack pitched his usual strong ball game, but Jerry Royce pitched an even better one and he got into trouble in the late innings in the 7th, 8th, and ninth, and he came off a winner by the score of 2-1. to one. Line score, the Pirates, two runs, nine hits, and no errors. The New York Mets, one run, seven hits, and no errors. Royce, the winner, his 16th win, equaling his total of last year at Houston. His record, 16 wins, 11 defeats, and that complete game, by the way, was his 14th complete game, the best he's had in his Major League career. John Matlack, the losing pitcher, pitched well again, but a loser, his record, 13 wins, 14 defeats. They were scoreless through the front five innings as, uh, as a matter of fact, Royce was perfect over the front four. He gave up a base hit to Ayala in the fifth inning. He was erased in a double play. And through the front six, he had retired 18 in a row with the eight of that double play. Pirates scored in the sixth inning after 26 consecutive innings when Royce was pitching. We didn't score a run. Finally broke through. Stennett ripped a single down the left field line. Sanguin punched one off the right side, sending Stennett to third. Oliver popped up to third, and Willie Stargell, after having a count of 0-2 on him, fouled off a couple of pitches, and it drew the count to 2-2, two two, got a slider away, drilled it deep to center field, off the glove of Don Hahn, scoring Stennett. Sanguin went to third on the play, and he intentionally walked Zisk. Robertson then got the big uh, run in with a sacrifice fly to right field, scoring Sanguin, and the ball got away from Dyer, and Zisk was thrown out trying to go to second base, and a good play by Macklin. That's all the run scoring the Pirates got. That's all they needed. Although it looked uh, kind of funny in the seventh inning. With two outs and nobody on, Staub failed the bunt. He struck uh, him out and got Ayala deep to center field and Milner to bounce to second base. In the eighth inning, with two outs and nobody on, Garrett hit one off his fist in the shallow left field behind Mendoza in front of Stargell. And then Theodore, pinch hitting, doubled down the left field line to put runners at second and third. The tying run at second. Hahn single the left field sharply. They had to hold the runner. Theodore at third base. And he got me on to tap out the third. Hebner bobbling the ball and finally getting the out at first base. And the ninth inning again, the leadoff batter got on and the inability of Ayala the bunt set up the double play. He bounced into it. Milner lined the left field. So the Pirates won a very big ball game. Tomorrow it's going to be Tug McGraw to go for New York. Jim Rooker to go for the Pirates. Till then, for Bob Prince, Nellie King saying so long from Shea Stadium. This game was brought to you in part by Joy. Nature's high-protein food for dogs. Higher in protein, and it still costs less than most other brands. By Daily Juice Natural Juice Products, Natural Fruit Drink Concentrate, and Daily's Cocktail Time Cocktail Mixes. By your Pirate Land Chrysler Plymouth dealer, who has immediate delivery on America's number one selling compact. And by your host for the opening innings, Iron City Beer. When you're really ready to pour it on, pour on the iron. Final score, the Pirates win it 2-1. to one. This is the Pirate Baseball Network.